Hello everyone, how are you? Today we are going to discuss saponins part 1. So, coming to learning outcomes, at the end of this lecture you will be able to define saponins, classify saponins and outline various properties of saponins. So first coming to definition of saponins or indirectly uh, what is saponins. Saponins, these are a class of glycoside which upon hydrolysis yield sugar and the egg glycon part that is non-sugar which is also known as sepogenin. So don't get confused with the term saponin and sepogenin. These two terms saponin and sepogenin they sound a bit similar but remember, uh, remember saponin represent glycoside which upon hydro, which hydrolysis yields sugar and the non-sugar part whereas the sepogenin is the non-sugar part of the saponin. So when you talk about sugar, it can be of any type, that is glucose, arabinose and xylose for example, but the saponins are generally classified into two types based on the chemical structure of a glycon, that is sepogenin, and they can be classified into two types, that is steroidal saponin, which are found to be neutral to pH, that's why they are also known as neutral saponins. They are also classified as triterpenoidal saponins, which are found to be acidic to pH uh, due to the presence of acidic functional groups. So you can see saponins can be classified into two types, that is steroidal saponin and triterpenoidal saponin based on the chemical structure of the sepogenin, that is the egg glycan part. Coming to characteristic features of saponins, they are amphiphilic in nature and possess surface active properties that means the carbohydrate moiety is water soluble whereas the sepogenin that is the egg glycan part is fat soluble and they form colloidal solution in water uh, as a, and they can modify and lower the surface tension and produce soap like foam or froth of aqua solution when shaken because of which they are, uh, they are used to increase the foaming of beer. They are also used as detergent for cleaning various industrial equipment. And they are also used as emulsifier for certain resins, fat and fixed oils. Saponins can also cause hemolysis of blood, uh, red blood corpuscles and destroy them. Hence, they are highly toxic when injected into the bloodstream but you need to remember that the saponins are harmless when taken by mouth they can cause hemolysis of rbc only when they are injected directly into the blood now question is why they are harmless when they are taken by mouth because saponins cannot be absorbed from the intestinal tract that's why when you take it by when you take it intentionally or by mistake by mouth they cannot cause a uh, hemolysis of RBC. Note, I would like to mention here, if any plant or plant extract contains a hemolytic substance, does it mean it contains saponins? No, it does not mean it contains saponins. Even though we have studied here, saponin can cause uh, hemolysis of RBC. So it means it is a proof that it contains, it, it is not a proof that it contains saponins. I repeat again, if a plant or plant extract contain hemolytic substances or able to do hemolysis for RBC, it does not always mean it is because of saponin. It can be, the action could be uh, because of the presence of other plant constituents. And because of this hemolytic property, they are also used as uh, fish poisons where they can accumulate in gills and preventing the oxygen transfer. They are also used in the synthesis of corticosteroids like cortisone. Now coming to one of the example of saponin containing drink that is sarsaparilla which is very famous drink containing saponin. It is a soft drink. It is originally made from uh, the plant uh, Smilax regali which is also known as uh, Jamaican Sarsaparilla belong to the family Liliaceae. Sometimes 
these drinks unfortunately also made with artificial flavors it is rich in saponin and uh, these drinks are mainly used for the preparation of non alcoholic beverages this is one of the example of sarsaparilla uh, example of non alcoholic beverages talking about the therapeutic uses of sarsaparilla it is uh, found to be useful for the treatment of uh, syphilis leprosy psoriasis and other ailments mainly the used part of the plant is the root is the root part of the plant which is medicinally used talking about the dosage uh, generally a range of 0.3 to 2 g per day of the powdered root is used for different tre treatment purpose not more than 2 g per day regarding the contradiction so far no contradiction is reported for this sarsaparilla drink so we'll finish our lecture with this today thank you so much